Welcome aboard the brand new Railjet. The Austrian State Railway's flagship train is one of the best high-speed services in Europe and they've recently acquired these gorgeous new trains. We'll be getting on board today for one of its first runs in commercial service, checking out the interiors in business, first and economy classes, looking at some of the new innovations the train brings and taking a deep dive into all aspects of the seat and onboard service. And what's more, this train runs through the Alps on one of Europe's most stunning railway routes. Oh, and of course, there's a dining car. Come with me on this beautiful new generation railjet from Munich to Bologna. Enjoy the video. Munich Hauptbahnhof is one of Germany's major railway hubs. A station has been on this site since 1849, but the main hall was completed only in 1960, a post-war reconstruction. Its 34 platforms form a hub for Deutsche Bahn's long-distance high-speed ICE services, regional and local S-Bahn services. It's arguably Germany's least attractive major city station, but it does the job and boasts direct services as far afield as Paris, Amsterdam, Rijeka, Prague and Venice. You should pop into the adjacent Starnberger wing of the station if you're passing. Thrown up in 1950, it is a curious little time capsule which sees relatively little foot traffic today. Our train today will depart at 13.34 from Platform 12. And here's our brand new Obebe railjet train. Manufactured by Siemens Mobility in Austria, it seats 520 passengers across three classes of service and shares the same basic design as the new Nightjet sleeper trains, which I've already reviewed on the channel. One of the main selling points of this train is its low floor in all but the first and last carriages, meaning easy boarding for people with mobility problems. I'll have a little more to say about this later as I think there are some curious design choices related to this feature. Obey Bay currently has four train sets with a further 19 on order and currently they're operating this route to Bologna in northern Italy via the Brenner Pass. will be hauled today by an Austrian Taurus locomotive, also manufactured by Siemens. Wow, what a beautiful, shiny new train. I've heard so many good things about the new railjet. It's time we got on board and checked it out for ourselves. In each of the two first-class carriages, there are two business-class compartments, a seat in which is available for a 15 euro supplement on top of the first-class fare. This comes with a welcome drink, but to be honest, a lot less privacy as you'd have to face a stranger, and I find it a pretty strange product. Then the seats are a downgrade on the older railjet trains too, if you ask me. First class is the second highest class of travel, below business, and is in a lovely 1-2 configuration. The seats look stunning. This is a really high quality interior, and my ticket today cost me €83.10. Euro you can pick your own seat from a map for an extra €3 euro on top. It's great to see so many paired and solo seats, as most people do travel alone or in pairs, and the winged backs give a little privacy. Let me know what you think of the interior in the comments. There's also a fine innovation with the luggage. NFC operated luggage locks if you're worried about theft. You can lock and unlock your bag using your contactless bank card like a key, or if you prefer with a pin code you choose yourself. We depart right on time, and it's well worth looking out for the imposing Signal Control Center, which was opened in 1964. It looks like something out of Star Wars.
Today's route takes us to Innsbruck in Austria and down the narrow but spectacular Brenner Pass across the border to Italy where we travel via Bolzano on to our destination of Bologna. Each seat in first class comes with a paper menu. I've included the full PDF in a link in the description below, but as you can see there's quite a lot of choice and the prices, while not matching the outstanding value of Hungary's classic on-train bistro, the prices are still reasonable. Cash and card are both fine to use on board. If you're sitting in first class, there is a dedicated host who passes through regularly and they're able to take your order and collect and deliver hot food from the dining car. To the naked eye, this train really is a splendid design. It's so clean, logically laid out and with facilities such as vending machines. By the way, can we get some of these on long distance trains back in the UK? They work nearly everywhere else, even if the prices are geared to suit the captive market. There's also a coffee machine, although the one on this train was out of order. Apparently the coffee hadn't actually been stocked. But I don't really understand why there are gendered toilets on board, something only seen on some night trains and definitely not something I'd expect on a day train. Economy is in a 2-2 layout. It's really smart in the open saloons and there are also some six-place compartments on board if you have a big group. The seats are similar to first class, albeit narrower and with decreased legroom, but they're still very pleasant and at €58.70 for the trip, it's still a really good option if you can't stretch to first class. The dining car is in one of the lower floor sections of the train and this split level design poses an issue. If you're in a wheelchair or you can't manage stairs, you can't be in first class and you also can't get to the dining car as there will be steps in your way wherever in the train you are. It's been noticed by accessibility groups but Obebe say in their defence, if you're in standard and have a wheelchair, you'll still get on-demand host service. But I'm not sure how reliable that will actually be in practice. The seats in first class really are comfortable, there's modest recline available, but the real star is the double table design with the smaller top one available to hold drinks and charge your phone wirelessly. Wired charge points are also available under the seats and there's a USB point in the back of every seat alongside a coat hook. There's also a footrest and an airline style pouch for storing other items. The smaller top table being for your drinks or smaller items leaves the main table, which is very sturdy, to hold your laptop or whatever else you have. This makes a really big difference as far as I'm concerned. Like most passengers, I've gone for an e-ticket, but when it gets checked, I'm told we have a technical issue with the train, which means we'll need to change trains at Innsbruck, but the replacement will apparently be identical. We're now doing 220 km per hour, having just crossed the border into Austria. Wi-Fi is available to everyone, and it's free. The landing page includes some basic journey information as well as some entertainment, although I always wonder who actually watches the supplied content. Still, it's really nice to have. This is Innsbruck, the capital of the Tyrol region and a city with the unusual distinction of being one of only three cities to hold the Winter Olympics twice. Well, that was easy. 
Can I help you? There we go. That's okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. I'll tell you one thing, the aircon's a lot better on this train than the last one. As our previous train sneaks off into a siding, it's worth reflecting. That episode only added five minutes onto the trip. Definitely one of the better managed technical faults I've come across, and all the seat reservations carried over too. We now head for the Brenner Pass, the stretch down to Bolzano being the scenic highlight of the trip, with the steep valley letting us glimpse the mountains and traverse numerous small tunnels en route. In the next 10 years, the Brenner Base Tunnel will open and make journey times much faster, and a lot less spectacular. The sun even makes a brief appearance, but not to worry, the train has excellent glare blinds which don't serve to darken the train, but rather just to dissipate the bright sunlight. Brenner is the border town between Austria and Italy, and here we enter what is now the Italian province of South Tyrol. The familiar Trenitalia station lettering reminds us we've just crossed a border, and we are now on the home straight to Verona and thence to Bologna. This stunning Alpine province was gained by Italy after World War I, part of the vast redrawing of Europe's boundaries, but much of the former Austrian identity still remains in some of the place names. I decided to have an early dinner in the dining car. Host service is available, but the opportunity to just break out somewhere else on the train on such a long trip isn't to be missed. I took one of these bar seats, but I have to say these seats are really small and surely aren't designed for people to sit next to each other. You wouldn't be able to get on or off the stools if somebody was sat next to you, surely. A triumph of style over substance, I think. I had a Viennese goulash with Almdudler herbal drink and this set me back 19 euros and 70 cents. Once again, I really don't get the gendered bathroom stuff. I did have a peek and they both seemed identical to me, but they are very, very clean as you'd expect from a new train. I was also surprised to see almost nobody else using the luggage locks. Maybe people are confused at how they work? I think these are a great addition. They're common on trains like the Narita Express in Japan, but fairly rare in Europe. We're in that bit of the video where I decided to try something new, and here's something I picked up at the station in Munich, beer cola. We're going to give it a whirl. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, but um, I don't think I'll be buying it again. Very odd.
we arrive into Verona and almost immediately reverse. The last section requires us to do so. And before too long, we are in Bologna, journey's end for this beautiful new train. This new train has so many positives. The design is stunning. It has a pleasant dining car, better luggage security, and it feels solid, well built, and a great addition to Obebe's roster. I'm a little disappointed in the downgrade that business class has had, but first is more than adequate, and even economy is a great choice for the price. This journey is stunning, and the new train sets only enhance the experience, and I'd be interested to hear your comments on the journey below. And as always, thanks so much for coming with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.